Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is the Internet of Things showdown attack. If you've watched my videos over the past few weeks, you're probably aware of my story talking about, first, the huge DDoS attacks that seem to be caused by infected Internet of Things devices, which affect Brian Krebs and some European hosting companies, as well as my follow-up story where attackers leaked the Mirai botnet. This seems to be the botnet that was behind these DDoS attacks. Essentially, this botnet could infect Internet of Things devices that exposed Telenet and had default passwords. And once infected, you can actually use those devices as a SOX proxy to send all kinds of malicious traffic. Well, anyways, today's update comes from Akamai. Akamai is one of the companies that hosted Brian Krebs' site. And they did a lot of research into the Internet of Things devices that were launching these attacks. In fact, they actually bought some of the vulnerable devices to do some of this research. In the end, they released a paper called Showdown, which is their name for this particular openness SSH tunneling attack. And by the way, this is a well-known old vulnerability in SSH, which has existed for a long time. But it seems many of these uh, Internet of Things devices that offer SSH seem to have old configurations which allow the problem. So what is the problem? Well, OpenSSH has a very legitimate feature called TCP forwarding. At the highest level, TCP forwarding allows you to basically forward any of your network traffic through an SSH tunnel to a server, and that server will then proxy it to wherever you're you're going. So in result, you can actually use an SSH server as a proxy for all your network traffic. And apparently, according to Akamai's research, this is what bad guys were doing with these devices. Many of these devices were configured to allow TCP forwarding by default, which means if they have the admin credential for the device, they can use this to actually forward all their network traffic through your Internet of Things device. And this is what led them to being able to use these devices to launch DDoS attacks of many different types. In any case, if you want more technical detail on this, I highly recommend you read the technical section of the report. It has a lot of details on the research they did and how these devices are improperly configured. Now, the big takeaway here, by the way, is this is an old known vulnerability. Back in 2004, there was a CVE where OpenSSH uh, installed with TCP forwarding enabled by default. Most OpenSSH servers should disable this by default, but apparently these Internet of Things devices don't do that. Simply by changing the configuration to disable this TCP forwarding, which really shouldn't be needed for these Internet of Things devices, you can really mitigate a lot of the impact of, of these particular uh, IoT attacks. So anyways, it's just an interesting new update to this whole IoT attack story. The main reason I wanted to bring it up is there is a new practical takeaway. In my past videos, I talked about using a firewall to prevent people from accessing any sort of management interfaces on Internet of Things devices. Most of these devices will have web management, they may also have Telenet or SSH management. But long story short, you shouldn't expose that management to the internet. And even if you do want to expose it so that you can uh, remotely access these devices and manage them, you should definitely limit that access either by IP address, username, or some sort of authentication or even a VPN connection. So just firewalling will help you a lot. But based on Akamai's paper, there is a new mitigation you may be able to do. Since these devices are using OpenSS, and some of them you may be able to access the OpenSSH configuration file, you may be able to actually disable this TCP forwarding feature yourself, which might help uh, prevent attackers from using you as a SOX proxy. So if you're a power user, you might look into how to do that for your various IoT devices. That said, you may not be able to access this configuration file in all cases. So really, it is up to the vendor to release their products with the proper hardening. Really, this should have come out of the factory with that setting disabled. Anyways, just an interesting update on the IoT story. Be sure to check out the official report. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.